Hi everybody and welcome. Uh, I'd like to present to you today my latest creation and that is the 63 gear selectable gearbox. Uh, so what this means is that with this gadget we can, using the levers up here, select 63 different gearing ratios between the input, which is over here on this motor, and this output over here. So this unit, like I said, consists of uh, six different levers. They, at the bottom there, uh, control six different gearing selectors at the bottom and then that is fed through five differentials in order to create the 63 possible gearing ratios. Uh, so the way it works is if you want a particular gearing ratio you simply need to select the numbers on these levers. So I've got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and minus 32. So for example if you like the gear ratio 3 you have to select 1 and 2 to make 3 if you want 7, you can select 1, 2, 4 to make 7. If you like 10, you'd be picking 8 and 2. So essentially what I'm saying is that the output gear ratio is simply the sum of the separate gear levers that are selected with each number on it. Uh, now you'll probably be familiar with the binary uh, coding system. Uh, this effectively implements a two-complement binary uh, number. Okay, I'll just show you how it works. So we'll turn on the motor. At the moment none of the gears are selected, so therefore the gearing ratio between the input and output is zero at this stage. If I select the first lever, which will give us a gearing ratio of one, we can now see that the output over here is turning at the same rate as the input over here. Uh, if I want to go to, for example, three to one, we can add on the lever for two. And now we're going to get an output of three to one. You can see it's turning faster. Similarly, if we add 4 to that, we'll get 7 to 1. So now we're going at a gearing ratio of 7 to 1 between input and output. Uh, for example, we can take the 2 off to bring us down to 5 to 1. Uh, we can add, for example, an 8 back on and get that prime number 13 to 1. Uh, we we'll go all the way up and add 16. 16 plus 13 is 29. Look at that. We're going at 29 times. Uh, and finally we can add that 2 and that gives us 31 times. Uh, so as you can see this gives us a forward um, gearing ratio of anything from 1 to 1 to 31 by just simply selecting the correct combination of levers. It's possible to generate any number but this effectively encodes a binary coding. Uh, we've also got uh, the negative 32 on the end there that effectively combines um, a 2's complement number. So by turning that on, it should start turning and reverse at minus 32. And similarly, we can then from minus 32 create minus 31. Take away 16, we get minus 15, or add 16 rather, uh, minus 7, minus 3, minus 1. Okay, we're going to have a look underneath to see how it works from the underside. We kind of see at this stage we've got the gear ratio of 1. And as we change the levers, for example at 8, we can see the different gears and the different differentials going at different speeds. Uh, it's all quite interesting. Now what really surprised me about this mechanism is that it doesn't actually work very well in reverse. Um, when I first designed it, I imagined that I'd be driving this side, uh, for example, three turns to give us one turn here. So it's an N to one rather than a one to N. So I've just modified it here and put the motor on what used to be the output. So that's now the input. And the previous input is now the output. Um, so for example, if I set the levers to seven to one, as you can see, then in this case in reverse, it does work, uh, so for every 7 revolutions of the motor we're getting 1 revolution on the output. But as soon as I add the minus 32 lever, for some reason it just grinds to a halt. Uh, and I'm still trying to figure out why that is. Uh, if I turn it around and just give it a 
just try the helping hand it does, does seem to work but for some reason the gearing is so low down here that it gets stuck and I'm still not quite sure why but hope to explain that in a future video Now if you're interested in the theory behind this design, I have got here an explanation. So what I've got here is a diagram uh, of the actual gearing mechanism. Uh, what we've got over here on the left is the input axle, represented by uh, the letter I. Uh, this connects to each of the five differentials through the selectors, A1 to A6. Uh, so that means if A1 is selected, that means the input connects like this. If it's not selected, then it's disconnected or connected to zero. Um, so again, we've got each of those selectors, A2, A3, A4, A5, and A6, connected together. And if we do the math behind this particular diagram and calculate the output to the input ratio over here, uh, we'll find that it's given by this equation shown down below. And if you look at that carefully, you'd recognize that as a binary expansion or a two complement uh, binary expansion of uh, using six digits. Uh, so if you're not familiar with binary numbers, uh, they pretty much use zeros and ones to represent uh, any normal decimal number. So for example, if we have something like 101, then what we have uh, normally in the uh, decimal representation of numbers, we've got a number like 98, then these are the ones and there is, are the tens, that means 10 nines and 1 8 makes 98. Case of uh, binary numbers, uh, these are the ones, these are the twos, and those are the fours. And if we have more digits like these, there will be the eights, uh, this will be the sixteens, and this could be the thirty twos. So in the case of a binary number, this one here would be 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 16 is 21, plus 32 is 53. So this is the binary equivalent of the number 53. So by comparing the representation of a binary number compared to the equation for the output to input, we can see the parallel, we can see that um, the values a1 to a6 represent the binary digits and the values from here 1 2 4 8 16 and 32 represent the placeholders so in this case we've got a6 1s a5 2s a4 4s a3 8s a2 16s and a1 times minus 32 so we've used the minus 32 in order to uh, change the range from minus 32 to, to 31 and that's called a two complement binary number um, and of course digits from A1 uh, all the way to, through to A6 that are either all 0 or 1. Okay, so if we compare the on paper design relative to the legal implementation, we can see how they relate. So down here we've got on paper the input axle and that's been implemented over here as the input axle and the gearing all the way to the top gives us that input axle all the way to each of the differentials. We've got the selectors here which select that input onto each of the differentials which are implemented here on the right. So we've got five differentials and each of those differentials connect their particular output on the right to the barrel of the next one and that's done through these outside gears here uh, and giving us finally the output parallel down there. So that uh, gives a very uh, similar uh, relationship between the diagram and the implementation. Okay, thanks for watching the demonstration of my 63 gear ratio gearbox. I hope you enjoyed it. If you ever need a gearbox that can generate any gear ratio between minus 32 and 31, well then here it is. Um, yes, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.